I want to appreciate God for a long life in my family. At a particular age, my parents were dying, but today we are enjoying long life. Secondly, my sis elder sister lost her job in 1999, and all this while she was able to engage herself, and all through, we tender it before God, and also she put it into a court case. She won the case to be reinstated back to her place of work, upgraded, and also pay all her entitlement. As I'm talking right now, they have paid the first part of the payment. And secondly, I want to appreciate God for securing a landed property for us. Sometimes, some years back, my father was able to acquire a landed property in a strategic place, and it has been an envy in our community. So uh, some people were able like, to influence one of their sons to start something in that land, and we said, if nobody wants to die, you're not there. And this guy started something. As I'm telling you, the guy died mysteriously and has been buried. I want to also appreciate God for divine help. For the past eight years, I've never taken Penador nor Andrew Liversort. But at a point in time, I discovered a growth on my back neck and my shoulder, and I willingly discussed with a doctor friend, and I was able to go through the theater. In short, I took myself, they operated it, and went back after the surgery successfully. I appreciate God. Hallelujah. You are next to share your own testimony in the name of Jesus. It's my new dawn era. Once again, uh, my name is Faith Akonuma Ifea Kachuku. Once again, I want to thank God for all the great things he has done for me. I used to say that if there is anything like sentimental grace, then I'm a product of it. God's grace in my life is just so overwhelming. I traveled. It was not easy. A journey that was supposed to take from morning till evening ended up taking me 24 hours. I left Lafayette at 6 a.m. and I got to my destination the next morning 6 a.m. The vehicle had spoiled in the way, so we slept in the bush from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. But God brought me out. I thank God for everything, for liberating my family and I. I thank God for the success of my wedding in advance. And I thank God for adding one more year to me this September. Praise the Lord. Multiple testimony awaits you today in Jesus' name. It's my new dawn era. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Kelly Bokafo. I'm here to thank God for restoration of health. The devil came with an affliction on myself and my wife. Even after several medication, we met with God's servants and he prayed for us. That same day, the affliction left. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, our health are fully restored in the name of Jesus. And secondly, I want to testify on behalf of a home cell member in my house. That was around midnight last week. She was hearing a cry behind the house, like a baby cry. So she, she, she summoned courage and come out with a blood of sprinkling and an anointing noise, sprinkling towards that direction where that voice was coming from. And uh, again, she took a stone and anointed the stone and threw the stone towards that direction. Suddenly, that evil voice stopped. And uh, after some days, she received a call from the village that somebody was accusing her that that witchcraft that you did, come and see what the result is. And she tried to find out what it was. She discovered that her evil plotters was mysteriously aff afflicted with a mysterious uh, ratchet all over them. So we thank God for what God has done in our life by avenging all of our evil plotters. Hallelujah. The Lord will avenge every evil target at you in Jesus' name. I'd like you to lift up your voice. Lord, do something unique in my life today. Do something unique in my life today. Let something unique answer in my life today. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Do something unique in my life today. In the name of Jesus Christ.
do something in my life that has never been done before. There's something unique. Answer for me. In the name of Jesus. Let something unique break forth for me. In the name of Jesus. Let something unique break forth for me today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Whatever is manipulating your life will be swallowed up today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Today, every programming of the wicked targeted against you will be shattered. Amen. Let that amen sound louder. Amen. Any door connected to your blessing, I decree them open for you in this service. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. In this covenant day of long life, and our focus is living without limits, we are taking the part two of the message in this second service. In the first service, we looked at how faith can make you live long. Scripture said that just shall live by his faith. Not your uncle's faith or your auntie's faith. That just shall live by his faith. So your faith limits will determine your living limits. You cannot live beyond your faith. So growing your faith is strengthening your stake for living. Every one of us have a stake of long life. But you determine how long you will live. Another vital reason why we need faith to live long is because Whatever is angry or threatens your life, faith can handle them. That is why scripture said in Ephesians 6 and verse 16, taking the shield of faith, whereby you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. When unseen forces, human forces, comes against you, faith is there as an antidote. Faith is a divine silencer. It silences them. So you cannot live well and live long without faith. Now faith is the bad place of belief. And that word believe means believe. You cannot become what you have not believed. So if you want to live long, you first of all be it. But faith gives you access to be it. Scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the more you believe in, the more you live. The more you believe, the more you live. The more you believe, the more you live. You must keep believing God. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her by the Lord. And Jesus said again, if thou canst believe, thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. The third one, we looked at the power of right speaking. How forcible are right words. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. Them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So everyone is eating a particular fruit now. Either you are eating the fruit of death or you are eating the fruit of life. How? By your speaking. You speak, you talk, you talk anyhow, you tear people. <laughs> Psalm 140 verse 11 Let not an evil speaker be established So if you are given to talking wrong Talking chaff 
tearing people, you will not last. You will not last. Scripture says, if you must see more better days, you must keep your mouth from speaking guy. And we share the testimony of how um, Kenneth Copeland spoke against Benny Hinn. And he went to Australia to go and preach. And he felt sick. And he said, Lord, why am I sick? He said, because you used your mouth against Benny Hinn. Go and meet him. Let him pray for you. So he had to fly down to meet Benny Hinn. Benny, I spoke against you in one of my meetings. And I felt sick. Please, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Some people will never do it to Lie, lie. They will never. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But he was even saying, why, why should I pray for you? Say, if you don't pray for me, God will not hear me. He was embarrassed. Out of the job, hugged him and prayed for him. He's a sincere man. Pride will never allow some people to dare it for what? <laughs> Lastly, we look at right eating. Right eating. So you try as much as you can to get the tape of the first service. Please. Eating right, very necessary. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do you know you can age faster by thinking wrong? Some people that are get, aging faster, it's not that it's, it, that's their age. Old. It's the way they have conditioned their mind to be thinking about bad things. Bad things, bad things. In this second service, Living Without Limits, we are focusing, we are starting with the word. John chapter 1, beginning from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Look at the next verse now. In him, in him, in him, and the life was the light of man. In the beginning was the word. So the word is a major, eternal source of life. Living long or living without limit places an eternal demand on you to constantly feed on the world. Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the more you hear the word, the more life is injected. The life, the very life of God. The very life of God. So, you don't cut short your life by reducing your work intake. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. Acts 17 and verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For in him we live. In him we live. In him we live. So if you must live without limits, don't limit the word intake. Colossians 3 verse 16. 
let the word of Christ dwell within you richly. 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 The moment you begin to starve yourself of the word, you will soon expire. You are gradually getting yourself disconnected from the source. So some people coming to church is like you are disturbing them. While even in their house, they don't even open the Bible. Scripture says they go from strength to strength. Everyone appearing before God in Zion. What strengthens us is the word. They go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. There is life in the word. The life of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. Hear me? As long as the word keep entering you, darkness cannot survive around you. Darkness symbolizes death. Darkness symbolizes hardship. Arise, shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Why? Every time the word enters, it releases glory. Every time the word enters, it releases glory. So word eaters are life takers. When you become a word eater, you are a life taker. You are taking your portion of long life. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That thou meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein for them. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. This book of the law shall not depart. You have a part of life. You must take your part. And the only way you must take your part is to dwell on the word. Proverbs 4 verse 20. Proverbs 4 verse 20. My son, Attend to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are what? For they are what? For they are what? Life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. And health to all their flesh. Job 3 verse 34. Job 3 verse 34. Verse 34. Job 3 verse 34. You don't have verse 34. <laughs> Let me see now. If I... Eh? Hold on. Job said, The breath of the Almighty has made me, and the Spirit of the Lord has given me life. Okay, let's go and I'll get it later. The breath of the Almighty has made me. So every time you are taking the word, the breath, the breath of the Lord is entering into you. The breath of the Lord is entering onto, is entering gradually, gradually, gradually. So you can't miss it as long as 
the breath of the Lord is entering into you. 33 verse 4, sorry. 33 verse 4. 33 verse 4. The Spirit of the Lord has made me and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. 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 These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. So every time the word is entering, life is entering. Life is entering. The life of God. The zoe. The zoe kind of life. That is what gives you a ticket to live well and live long. The eternal life of the spirit. So you cannot live your full age ordained and appointed for you by starving yourself of the word. Dodie Austin, the wife of um, no, not Joel. Joel is the son. John Austin. She had a terminal disease that was to almost take her life. They've taken her to almost the almost the anointed men of God to pray. And the doctor finally said she has six hours more to live. When they told her she had six hours more to live, first thing that came to her with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. She said to herself, Lord, this is not long life. I'm not supposed to go now. Do you know what she did? She located 40 healing scriptures. And she began to read the scriptures to herself. From six hours to six days. From six days to six years. She's still living now. The husband had gone since. You can't expire until you sign out. You will just fully sign out. She said, no. I refuse to go. So she located 40 healing scriptures. She began to read the scriptures to herself. She began to read it to herself. She's still living now. The sickness has expired. She refused to expire. Nobody can expire you before your time. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So ignorance, ignorance of the word is a danger. It's not even an excuse that you die premature. It's not an excuse. So you must not tolerate ignorance. You must not tolerate ignorance. You must go for light. Nothing empowers you to live long that light than light. No wonder Papa said, if you are not informed, you are bound to be deformed. So light is the gateway to advancing in life. You advance in age. David said, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. So as you are growing in understanding, you are living better. Better life is a heritage. But it, it is limited to light. So it is the light you secure that determines how far you will live. How far you will live. That brings us to talking about vision for life. Scripture says, where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. To perish means to die slowly. So you must have a vision for living. You must have a vision for living. Like I said in the first service, if you must live long, you must not live careless. You must not talk careless. If not, you just be cutting your shirt short, short. You are shortening it. People that live long, they don't live careless. But it begins with a vision. It begins with a vision.
So living with vision is living on purpose. You are living on purpose, not confused. You are not confused how you are going to live. So living with a vision is living for a particular cause, not a purposeless life. If you are purposeless about your living, you will just, you will just catch one, one error and you are gone. When you are living with a vision, you are living to make a difference. And you know, it's your vision that keeps you longer. Until your vision is finished, that's when you are, you are permitted to go. So a man with a worthwhile vision to live long cannot just suddenly expire. It's not possible. No wonder visionaries, they are transgenerational men. They leave generational legacies. Why? They are living for a worthwhile cause. They are not just merely existing. So the absence of vision reduces life to mere existing. There are people who are just merely surviving. They are not existing. Do you know why? They are living without a vision. Buying a car is survivor. Getting a visa to travel is survivor. Having a vision to live makes you live above those things. You will have them and you are still living well. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Absence of vision is the reason why people live a life of indiscipline. And when you live an indisciplined life, you are living a careless life and you will suddenly expire. Check people that live with a vision. They are careful with where they go. Who they move with. Who they talk with. Why? They don't want anybody that will cut short their life. But visionless people, they can just talk with anybody. Anybody can just call them and they will now begin to talk. For what? You can't engage me in a conversation when I don't know who you are. A man with a vision is disciplined with his time. Disciplined with everything about him. But a visionless man, for where? Where there is no vision, there is no order. Life requires order. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Life requires order. A man with a vision will be concerned about his spirituality. Will be concerned about his emotional state. Will be concerned about his physical state. He will be concerned about everything about him. Vision disciplines you to the point of determining who becomes your friend. Eagles don't fly with chickens. Eagles don't company with vulture. Because it determines how you will live. Now, have you ever seen other animal company with pigs? Talk now. Why? Are they not animals? So in life, you will not end well until you begin to see well. Because life is to you as far as your eyes can see. You can't end well until you begin to see well. Lack of vision will give birth to hopelessness. Lack of vision will increase your frustration. Lack of vision will give birth to depression. 
But I want to let you know, if you will live long, you will tell yourself, my tomorrow will be better than my today. I remember the testimony of a young man in Covenant University last year, graduated the previous set. If it were to be some people, they would just go and commit suicide. When he was in JS1, JS2, JS3, he was not doing well. But immediately he entered SS1. The swing changed. And everything began to change. He said he made up his mind that he will graduate as one of the best students in Covenant University. In that last set, he graduated with 4.99. Yes, 4.99. This uh, young girl that graduated um, um, last month or two months ago, the, in fact, she just equaled the young man's record. 4.99. What's the difference between 4.99 and 5? 0 0.1. 0 0.001. But he made up his mind he was heading for the best. Tell yourself, I will live the best life best life. But I remembered in his testimony he said, when I made up my mind I began to change my company of friends. There are, there are people that can make you not to see far. And by so doing, you will not go far. They can make you not to see far and by so doing, you will not go far. So you must be careful. I've learned something also People with great vision, they don't, co they don't company with average minds. What do I mean by average minds? An average mind is someone that is so comfortable to be discussing people. Your mind is too average. Great minds always talk about ideas, innovations, Things they can do and impact life. Things that will bring them to the realm of exploit. Average people always. There is no day that will pass that they will not gossip somebody. No day that will pass. No day that will pass. Like we said in the first service, your mouth is your gateway to life. Your mouth also is your gateway to death. Choose. It's not by force. Nobody will determine how you will live. Your vision will determine how you will live. Your vision will determine how you will live. No wonder visionaries. Well, whether you call it a secluded life, it's a choice. Because it's not everybody that is going where you are going. Even though all of us are seated here now in church, our visions are not the same, huh? Lie, lie, our visions are not the same. It's not everybody that is seeing what you are seeing. Many are looking, few are seeing. Many are luku luku. They are doing luku luku. Many are looking, few are seeing. God will not take you further if you have not seen further. The father you see, the father you go. Now, it's a human theory which is wrong that as you grow older, your sense begins to diminish. It's a lie. I read the testimony of a white woman at 76. She went to obtain a BSc degree. 76. At 76, the body should have been uh, collapsing small, small. But not lie, her own is getting stronger. If she did not have a vision of what she wants to accomplish, how would she be thinking of doing BSc at 76? Oh, my children, it is your time. We have passed the age of reading book. You will soon die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> you have not passed the age of reading book. Oh. You can read the book now. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, if your vision is fading away, go and ignite fire on it. Catch fresh vision. Because you can live longer than you can see. 
the farther you see the longer you live the reason is this because you want to arrive at what you have seen you will place caution on yourself on where to go where not to go who to company with who not to company with there are people you must avoid i repeat it there are people you must avoid if you must not miss your dream and miss god there are people you must avoid not that you hate them they will not help you to reach there If I want to cut you off, I don't pretend about it. I give it to you. Boa. Straight. No apologies. If there is anything I was to gain from you, please go with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I learned that one from Papa. Papa does not have apology for whoever he disconnects from you. He does not have any apology. The reason why some people will not live long. I hope you know, Ammon by bad right was supposed to live long. But he had one bad friend that taught him evil against his own sister. So check the people around you. Check the people around you. Check the people around you. Will this person help me arrive at where God has in mind for me please don't pretend about whoever is around you if you are not comfortable please step aside go your way I go my way we only met in Lafia am I saying the truth yeah. uh, we are not meant to journey forever if we are to journey forever you will behave yourself can two walk together except they be agreed in friendship hear me friendship is conditional if you cannot walk in my way, leave me alone and go your way. It's as simple as that. That's how relationship is. You can't forcefully marry someone that you know will punch your eye. It will change in the future. It will change in the future. The Holy Ghost is already giving you sign that this person will talk. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Before you know what's happening, your face will now turn to Muhammad Ali. You better be careful. God is already giving you signs. You are waiting for the Holy Ghost to speak to you. The signs you are seeing now is the Holy Ghost speaking. I think that word is for somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Oh. I learned something from Pastor Chris Abraham recently. Friendship is for a season. Friendship is for what? The moment the season expires, don't renew it. Don't renew it. If not, you'll be getting pains every time. Friendship is for a season. The moment the person begins to behave contrary, behave craftily, behave cunningly around you, please don't, don't do it tactically. Give it to him. Boa! Go your way. Friendship is for a season. Not all friendship lasts forever. Stop deceiving yourself. The moment I sense that my, my relationship with you will not last long, I begin to blank you on some certain secrets and information. That's my pattern. I learned it from my master, Pastor Jeme. And Bishop Abie. Blank the person. It will know that he's already been cut off. Because your ways are now contrary. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? How many have I mentioned? The word, vision, dreams.
Joseph had a dream. Scripture says, and he dreamt yet another dream. And he dreamt yet another dream. Now, all the dreams he dreamt, his encounters were negative. After dreaming, sharing the dream with his brothers, they were offended. Let's do away with this dreamer. You can't kill a man of dream. You can't kill a man of dream. But rather, his dream preserved his life. What is keeping you now is your dream. A life without a dream is a life without a destination. You don't know where you will end. So without a dream, you don't have a compass to destiny. And you will not know your destination. So to be dreamless, it to be futureless in life. So how can you now live long? To be dreamless is to be futureless. Dreamless people are not hopeful people. So it's risky to live without a dream. When a man becomes immovable, go and check it, he has a dream. He has a dream. So do everything possible to catch a dream that will take you to the next 50 years, to the next 70 years, to the next 80 years, to the next 100 years. The more robust your dream, the more fulfillment you'll be desiring. you desire fulfillment. You don't just suddenly aspire. I've discovered that dreamers are planners. That brings us to this fact. That once a dreaming is in place, you begin to plan your life. You plan your life. Planning your life is planning your living. You don't live anyhow. You plan your life. You plan every moment. You plan every season. Once a dream is in place... You possess what we call the possibility attitude. I will be there. No matter what is happening now, I will soon be there. Scripture says concerning Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. There are some people when challenges come now, they begin to get depressed. They begin to get depressed. Hear me? Depression kills faster than cancer. If you open the door to depression, you will fall sick. It will scatter the hormones in your body. And before you know what's happening, you are going. You'll be wondering what is happening to you. Depression, then they do you. They will take you for a lab test, check up. Doctor will check, check. They won't say anything. They say, go to church. Go to church. Let them pray for you. Why? Because stethoscope cannot see depression. Can you see depression with stethoscope? Now lie, you can't see it. Even if a brother has disappointed you, that does not mean. I saw, I saw uh, one of my members in one of my stations posted on Facebook that uh, a sister told a final year student that he will not marry again. He went, the boy went and committed suicide. For what? Then, then tie you, tie the girl. Are you the first person that they will tell that they will marry you? But there are some people, the moment you tell them that they uh, will marry them, they will fall sick for three days. They will go and give them drip in the hospital to resuscitate them. Mumu. You are not sick of love. You are sick of mumu. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If the fake does not go, the real will not come. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Any man that disappoints you is not worth you. Is not worth you. 
We read the story of um, Billy Graham. The first woman he proposed to before he passed on. Um, Mary. You see me finish, I mean, he say, Um, Mary. I know pity you. Go and look for your type. So she left. So, another time, he had, when he later got married, he had a powerful meeting, come and see crowd. Everybody was rushing to touch Billy Graham. So, in the process, he now turned and saw the lady. The lady came for the meeting. So he now told his wife, he said, that's the lady I will have gotten married to. Really? The wife came out from the, from the house, ran to go and meet the lady. Thank you for saying no to my husband. Thank you for saying no to my husband. Do you know what happened to that lady? She didn't see a future in Billy Graham. She didn't see a future. She didn't see a future. The first lady that I proposed to you know what she told me? When will I buy a car? I am sure wherever she is now, she will be hearing what is happening. When will you buy a car? When will you build a house? And I replied, you only have to answer yes or no. So decide it. All this one, you brothers are trying to need that now. You are what you call all day. Need that to propose what? <laughs> <laughs> Hear me? Cool down, cool down. Sisters, you are to be found. You must pray God that whoever finds you have found favor. So it's not so you come and need that. Which Bible? <laughs> That's what we call error. I say error. <laughs> it's a big error. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God has taken my life from levels to levels. And the levels are just growing. I'm just growing, growing. Kake. <laughs> Thank God she did not see this side. The things that I heard. Thank God. Tell your neighbor, catch a dream. Catch a dream. You will not live small, oh. I say you will not live small. You will not end up like a local champion. You will end up like a global figure. If you are saying amen, say better amen. So, the next one, giving. Giving is your ticket for living. You don't know the meaning of living until you are a giver. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it drops to the ground, it brings forth much more fruits. The more you give, the more you leave. Giving enhances your living. Why? Because giving attracts blessings. Parental blessings. 
blessings of spiritual fathers they are attracted by our giving when isaac i mean uh, jacob gave in genesis 27 the father swore blessings of life blessings that will sustain preserve keep him in life so if you are not a giver i pity you some people don't even give to their parents how much more their spiritual parents You don't give based on quantity. You give based on what you have. And when God sees your heart, he adds more to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I started giving to my parents when my salary was 12,600. It's not now that they started Pastor Mike then with a, when the status has changed. No, we started when the thing was small. 1,000, 1,005. And the thing started going up. You hear me? What you can't do now, you can't do tomorrow. If God can prove you with 2,000, why will you give them 20,000? Some people build house for their parents when they are dead. Emergency building. You think they will be happy in their grave? So start planning the house you build for your mother, for your father. I'm not joking, no. Start now. Because you have planned it, God will open the door. You better say a good amen. Because you have planned it, God will open the door. But if it's not in your plan, no way, the door will not open. God looks at the plan you make to determine where he will future. He can't future in a futureless plan. Start thinking it, start thinking it. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Start thinking it. If it is 5,000, 2,000 you can afford, let it be going monthly. Let them be seeing it. As they are sending it, they are, my son, it shall be well with you. You will prosper. You will not go down. That's how they've been blessing me. That's how they've been blessing me. Before my father passed on in 2007, man, every, every if I have chance for leave, that's where I go. Throughout we will stay. My mother will not cook. She will be relaxed and be eating. The last one we went, he said, you will be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in the blessing. He said, your storehouse will not run dry. He said, you will be the Joseph of this family. He said, you see your... God will so bless you to the point you will have accountants. That's what he said. I will soon enter that realm. Amen. You better say your own. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You must connect to parental blessing and you must also connect to fatherly prophetic blessings. You can't miss the two. That is, the, that is the entrance to generational realm of blessings. Some people, the only thing they are doing is abusing their mother and their father. Scripture says, He that cursed his father and his mother, his lamb shall be put off in obscure darkness. He that cursed his father and his mother, who is your mother, who is your father? Keep cursing them. You will soon die. You will soon die. Because wherever they are, they will be swearing for you. If I carry you with this belly for nine months, you know, go see better. There are parents that do it. There are parents that do it. You make them shed tears and you are still bragging, useless mother, useless father. The earth will burn like oven for you. I'm telling you, if your mother cried because of you, after this service today, call her and beg her. Tell her that your pastor said I should call you and beg you. If the distance is not far, make sure you go knee down. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Scripture says, Honor thy father and thy mother so that it shall be well with you. I'm not receiving honor from you. The only thing is you are doing is insulting me. Insulting me, insulting me. You think it can be well for you? Now lie. You see this earth? You see this heaven? 
they will fight you. That's to biological parents, now your spiritual parents. Are you a bastard? Answer me. Are you sure? Are you sure? May you not open your mouth to speak against your pastor. If not, you have entered the class of a bastard. And you will become a spiritual vagabond. And the wolves of the air they eat you up. We value our spiritual fathers. We value them. We don't value them because we give them prophet of it. No! We reverence them in our hearts. They too, they have known that we reverence them. I've said it before. Anywhere they feel like posting me, I go still shine. I go still shine. Because they have deposited the blessing that opens the heaven. Bishop Abuye said, your earthly father gives you a place on the earth. But your spiritual father unlocks the heaven for you. So every time they are swearing blessing, men, they are advancing our life. Preserving our life. May you not miss the blessings of your spiritual fathers. What some people are only doing is attracting causes. It's not a good sign. It's not a good sign for you. It's not a sign that you are growing to the point that you have mouth now to be sitting down and been discussing and tearing down your spiritual fathers. I pity you. It's a sign of ignorance. Keep growing in that ignorance. But the sign is that you are cutting short your life gradually. Gradually. We may be edge mates, but never grace mates. Never grace mates. I've never seen where Bishop Abiyah gets offended and is now reacting against Papa. Never. Neither Bishop Aremu, neither Pastor Jeme. For where? You are sister Holy Ghost. So you can confront them, speak against them anyhow. Just ride on. Miriam tried it against his own brother, eh, 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 Moses. And God asked him, who are you to speak against my servant, Moses? To other prophets, I talk to them in dreams and vision. But to Moses, I speak to him as a friend, talk to his friend. But because you have dared this, you will not die a natural death. The earth will open up and swallow you. It was God speaking. Please, I beg you, be careful. The reason why many are suffering today is not when you're doing them all. They are mouth. They are mouth. And you will tear everybody. You tear pastor. You tear dickiness. Tear elder. Tear members. How can you live long? That's why I don't get bothered. Whoever is speaking against me, whether I say pastor, office staff, try you, continue. One day they go transform me, I go go. You will continue your suffering. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a funny thing. Am, am I saying the truth? Uh, I'll just be going. I'll just leave you. You go your way. Please be careful. You are not blessing them. Every day you are tearing them. Run for your life. My son, you should be told us a match, my child. Every time you will come with your wife, you will come with your children to be blessing me. Keep doing it. Very soon, the difference will be clear. I tell you, you are coming into our status where you will be saturated with blessing round about. I can remember everything he said that day. You will be saturated with blessing. He said, Let them be pretending as if they don't have, and they will never have. He's talking about other person. Let them be pretending as if they don't have. And they will never have. Keep pretending as if you don't have. You will never have. I've told you here severally, I don't live by salary. As the salary is hitting my account, even the bonus that they paid us, I'm clearing it out this week. 
I sold to Papa, I sold to Mr. Babier, look for the one person. I, I keep sowing. Am I a beggar for what? God is increasing me every day with ideas and opportunities. And as I'm releasing it, that's how they are swearing blessing for me. My son, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your family. You will go forward. You will see better things. The other day he said, you have entered our realm of blessing. You can never go down again. Man, I tell you, is working. You look at uh, widows, orphans, you bless them. I hope you know, when orphans pray for you, it's express. We bless them. We look at widows, not these uh, executive widows. Oh. <laughs> I hope you know there are executive widows. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, the ones that cannot help themselves. You reach out to them. That's what uh, Job was doing. He said, I was a father to the fatherless. I was eye to the blind. I took up the course for the one that has no voice. Why? He saw it as an opportunity and God was blessing him. He that gave it to the poor lend it to the Lord. It's not after service now. You say, I hope you are there. Pastor, say it again so that they can hear you well. So that uh, not when we are going to meet them that they will say, I don't have. Pastor, say it again so that they can hear you well. You are not a professional beggar. I say you are not a professional beggar. Some people, the middle of service is over, they will not go and target them where their car is. They look at the car. Hey, this man will get this car, must get money. <laughs> the way this car finds rich. This man must get money. So they will be targeting the person. <laughs> oh my God. May the Lord deliver you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I'm saying something now. God will bless you to the point that you will become a certified blessing. Amen. Everywhere you go, it is blessing galore for you. Amen. Giving empowers living the more you give the more you are strengthened to live and lastly right eating i will take eating in all the sessions right eating please i beg you you need this body to reach your full age. Don't eat anyhow. What did I say? Don't eat anyhow. Now, I said in the first service, some people can hold urine for three hours, four hours. You are killing your kidney. Apart from that, some people can decide to say, I won't go to the toilet. I will hold this shit. <laughs> I will make sure I hold it. I know I will, I will hold it tight. I will hold it tight. You will have what we call colon cancer. Am I correct? The more you keep doing that, you are opening the door for colon cancer. So if toilet is catching you, look for the next available place. Oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Be careful. Is, is there any form of status that you want to urinate? Ah, they will see me. I want to. For what? Status. Who give you status? If, if we is catching you, look for a place and hide and we will, my friend. Now be saying, I will hold it in Lagos. When we are traveling to Johannesburg, I felt pressed. So the hostess, the chief hostess said, You are not permitted to. I said, Will you keep quiet, my friend? So I want to eat myself. Say, Open it up for me. (laughs) 
I know my right. Oh. <laughs> you can't oppress me when I know my right. Will you keep quiet, my friend? Come on, open the door. Everybody turn. Can't you hear that he wants to ease himself? I said, don't mind him. I'll give him a slap. He will sit down. <laughs> so I should, I should hold we we till uh, uh, get out. Nonsense. The door opened door. As I came out, he was now apologizing. I'm sorry. Sorry. Shh. Go and sit down. I finished my wee wee. So, <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now I said again in the first service. The first thing you do after brushing your mouth, drink water. Every day our body accumulates toxins by reason of what we eat. But the more you take water, the more you are sending them out. You're sending them out. Keep flushing them out. Keep flushing them out. It's risky when you don't take water. You don't only suffer dehydration. <laughs> Your blood will become concentrated. The only thing people like to listen is how to prosper. They don't know that you can prosper in the body too. Health is wet. If God gives you money now and you don't have health to eat it, you will die. People will still come and eat your money. Some people will only shed tears on the day of the burial. After that day, they don't start to laugh. Oh, yes, God, life continues. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Yeah. And after that day, relations will start coming. How do we share that thing? How do we share that thing? Share what? That thing. The car, the land, the house. So they won't feel pity for you. So since they will not feel pity for you, be conscious about your health. Be conscious about what you eat. You know, those days in Yoruba parties, cow must drop. Oh. Because every plate will not have space to chuck the eba or the fufu. There will be meat, my God. Man, Yoruba will say, eat meat. The people they, they eat meat for me. <laughs> Should I tell you something? Eating meat is not a sign of arrival. It is not a tradition. You go die quick. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You go chop meat. No one that's all. They will eat meat, eat meat. Their butters will turn to Dunlop Elite. Part of the body is fat. It's not a sign that you are living well. Excess fat compress the blood vessels, and that's why they quickly catch high blood pressure. Go and check it. No wonder this new generation now. Check it. Check the way their body is. Ajiboish is the one of those. Those olden days, man, the, the way they, they eat. Be careful. Food can kill. I say food can kill. Please don't eat anyhow. I said it in the first service. Some people they will eat egg now. Tomorrow they will eat egg again. Are you a baby? Egg is meant for babies. It's meant for children. The moment you cross 21, you don't need egg every time. How many of us drink coke here? Don't lie, yo. If you are drinking coke, just raise your hand, my friend. Why are you pretending? Raise your hand now. Baba. My father, my father. Do you know what? Every bottle of coke you take, you have swallowed eight cubes of sugar. Coke in the morning, coke in the night, 16. There are some people here that cannot eat without taking coke. It's like the coke is helping to make the food sweet. <laughs> they will eat small, they will drink coke. Are you hearing what?
what I'm saying? I'm not wasting my time, oh. I'm not wasting my time. Excess sugar in the body is preparing you for a life of diabetes. Oh, you don't know. You are preparing yourself for diabetes. Do you know that coke can be used as fire extinguisher? Oh, you don't know. I'm the one telling you. So if you see any fire around you, don't go and look for home and water. Open a bottle of coke. Just shake it. You go quench. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? Somebody is angry with me. But I must tell you the truth. Because I want you to live long. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? How many eat pork meat? Pig. Please be sincere. Be sincere. Raise your hand, man. Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. We are learning. Every time you eat pig meat, it takes eight hours plus to digest. So if you eat pig in the morning, pig in the afternoon, pig in the night, <laughs> the following day you continue. Please don't eat again. Your pastor says you should not eat again. No, go tell and say I'm eating go. So that they will not say I'm doing bad market for them. I want you to live long. In Jesus' name. I say I want you to live long. In Jesus' name. You can buy goat meat. Goat meat is very good. And chicken is very cheap in this area. Are you here around saying now? My goat or chicken. Yes. No eat blood meat again. No. And no they turn back now. You are the point. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> Are you hearing me now? If you can't afford cow tail or cow leg, just buy shaki, roundabout, liver. All those uh, blood meat is for children. It's for children. Somebody is angry with me again. Let me round up with this. Late eating is bad. Anything that crosses nine o'clock, stop. Allow the system to rest. In fact, actually, the system rests. No wonder anytime you eat late, go and check it. In the morning, you will be gassing. Wow, wow, wow. Do you know what you are suffering? Indigestion. Because you ate late. And if you are suffering indigestion, don't hurriedly rush food in the morning. Keep drinking water. It's a sign that the acidic composition of what you ate is more. Keep drinking water. You'll be flushing it out. Keep drinking water. You'll be sending it out gradually, gradually, gradually. People think fruits are expensive. It's a lie. Do you know at times I just buy a egg? Got the egg leaf. I'll just be chewing it. Someone will be asking me, what, what's the meaning of that one? I'm regulating my blood system. At that, my father will ask me, what will you eat? Buy carrot. Buy cucumber. Buy watermelon. He says, is that all? Yes. Is that food? No. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying, huh? You may say, I'm eating junk. Now you, they eat junk, mass. The white men will be eating grass. You will be calling them dieting. Not knowing that they are strengthening their life by eating well. You call it luxury, but that's their way of life. That's why while all this while we were in Joss, I took time to study all the cucumber, cabbage, everything. I was studying it, studying it, studying it, studying it, studying it, studying it. Why am I studying it? I'm getting to the realm whereby they will just mix some of those leaves, green. I'll just drink it. I'm okay. I'll just go out. You will not die before your time. The next thing you need to live without limit is prophetic blessing. Rise to your feet.
I'd like you to lift up your voice now. Lord, from today, I will not leave word dry. Every form of visionlessness, dreamlessness, hopelessness, deliver me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, deliver me from wrong speaking, from wrong talking. Lord, deliver me. Whatever I have gone out of my mouth that I want to cut short my life, Lord, deliver me. Have mercy on me. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, deliver me. In the name of Jesus, any evil war that have gone out of my mouth, which the enemy want to take advantage of to cut short my life, Lord, have mercy on me. Lift up your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to pray right now. Any arrow of untimely death. Fired against me. Lord by this oil. Let the spare of fear. The fear of untimely death. Backfire. Wherever the arrow was projected from. Let it go back upon the head of the sender. Lift up your voice right now. Begin to pray. Lerando Shekotelia. Reason. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are here, you are not born again. But you want to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer with me, come right now. I want to pray with you. Just come. God bless you. Come right now. I'm free. Come. I'm, I will be the one to anoint you. Where are you? Come free. right now. I will anoint you here. Come quickly. God bless you. Just come quickly. I want to. I will be the one to anoint you. Come. 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 Inside and outside. Come quickly. In Christ, I'm free. If you are coming, come of untimely death targeted against me Lord by the anointing let the plan of the wicked fail lift up your voice and begin to pray right now any arrow of untimely death targeted against me la popre le ronde beru shakatalia
Liso do lobredi sheklo bebredi akata. Laya mambredi sheko teke bredi abala bada bada ba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Put your right hand on your head as I pray for you. I decree today by the authority of Jesus, no one of you will die premature. No one of you will die before his time. The number of your days you will fulfill. That amen is not strong enough. Any plan of hell targeted against you to cut short your life. That arrow backfires in the name of Jesus. Any part of your body that has opened up for weakness, I decree healing now in the name of Jesus. The healing fire of God touch that part of your body now. I command recovery for you in the name of Jesus. Say amen like a believer. I pray for you. You will live your full life. You will live long and you will live well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any arrow of untimely death targeted against you, let it go back to the sender. Make that amen louder. I decree you bless in the name of Jesus. I call forth for the blessings of the earth for you in the name of Jesus. I release upon you spiritual blessings in the name of Jesus. Whatever is needed for your life to flourish. By the four winds of the spirit, I command manifestation. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your family. It shall be well with your children. It shall be well with your household. It shall be well with your work. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All eyes open. Just turn on for.